Now, in the last lesson, we created what's called a getter. So a block of code that will execute whenever we try to get the value of a property. Now, computed properties also allow you to specify some code that should be executed when its value is set. And this is called a setter. So for example, in addition to this block for get, underneath it, I can also write a block that's called set. And the block of code inside the set will be executed whenever this property gets a new value set to it. So for example, inside here, I can simply write a print statement that says number of slices now has a new value which is, and there's a special variable that we can tap into, which is called new value. And this new value is equal to essentially exactly that. It's the new value that's been given to number of slices. So for example, if we delete all of this and we simply write number of slices is equal to 12, then you can see right away down here, we get printed number of slices now has a new value, which is 12. And that new value comes from this line here. So having this block of code, which we call the setter, allows us to tap into the exact moment when our property is set with a new value. And it allows us to use that new value in computations or various bits of code and to execute it at the exact time when this property's value gets updated. Now, if you don't have a setter specified for your computed property, say if we delete that block, you can see that you get an error here when I try to set number of slices equal to 12. And it says that cannot assign to value number of slices is a get only property. So because I only have a block specified for get, then this computed property is now effectively read only. So I cannot set it to have a new value, but I can use it whenever I need to. So this still works.